Little Caesars Crazy Bread Breadsticks are soft, they're fluffy, <laughs> they're so delicious. Guess what? You don't even have to put pants on to get them anymore because I have a recipe for you to make your own crazy bread right in your own kitchen. What is up you guys? It is Carly here and you're officially cooking with Carly. We are making crazy bread in your own kitchen today and I'm pretty sure you could probably relate to this, but I think I like the crazy bread better than I like the pizza. And since I live in pretty much the middle of nowhere, it takes a long time to get to any restaurants. I have a lot of copycat recipes on my website and most popular is this crazy bread recipe. Let's talk about our simple ingredients to make our dough. All we have here is a little bit of warm water and it's divided. I will tell you why in just a minute. We have a little sugar, yeast, salt, and oil. And we have flour here too. And no, that is not my largest bag of flour. <laughs> our water is separated here so that we can proof our yeast. We wanna proof our yeast, which means we wanna activate it to make sure that it's good and that it's working right so we don't waste all the flour and everything to have breadsticks that don't rise. What I have here is two and one quarter teaspoons of yeast and that is the same as one packet. And it's going into one quarter cup of warm water. To get the yeast alive and kicking, it needs a little bit of sugar just so it has something to feed on. I have three quarters of a tablespoon of sugar here which is what the whole recipe calls for and I am just going to sprinkle in a little bit of that and give it a quick stir to proof our yeast. Let's get this out of the way so you can see here. While this yeast is proofing, it will go from just you know water with some yeast in it and it will start to bubble up and rise and foam. And that's exactly what we wanna see. While we're waiting for that to bubble up and proof, we're going to add the rest of the ingredients to our stand mixer here. Into our stand mixer is going to go one cup of warm water, a tablespoon of oil, whoa, it's <laughs> a weird noise, a teaspoon of salt, the rest of our sugar here, and three cups of flour. enough for this. <laughs> Our yeast is proofed here. Do you want to come show them this? You can see that it has foamed up and it's bubbled quite a bit, which means our yeast is alive and kicking and it's ready to be tossed into the mixer. Let's put our yeast into the mixer here. And let's knead this for about five minutes. So five minutes after the dough comes together, we're going to continue kneading it. Let's start mixing this. We're going to go slowly at first, and then once the dough has come together, we're going to start kneading a little bit faster, probably on speed, you know, four, almost six, for a total of five minutes. Now, can you make this recipe if you don't have a stand mixer? Of course you can. It will just be quite a bit of a workout. Just stir everything with a spoon or a, like a silicone spatula, something like that, um, in a big bowl until it's too hard to stir everything together and then turn it out onto your counter and then knead until it is nice and smooth and elastic. It's kind of hard to put a time frame on that just because everybody's guns are a little bit different. Now your dough should clean the sides of the bowl pretty well, but it still should be pretty soft. If your dough is not cleaning the sides of the bowl, just add a little bit more flour, like a tablespoon at a time until it does. Now it is time to let our dough rest and rise. We wanna rise this until it is double. You can do that right inside of this bowl here and allowing it to set at room temperature for about an hour. I'm going to speed up this process by using my Instant Pot though. If you have an Instant Pot and wanna do the same thing, check out this video right here about proofing dough in your Instant Pot. It'll give you all of the details 
I will proof this dough, make it rise to double in 20 minutes in my Instant Pot. Like I said, you do not need an Instant Pot to make this. It just makes the rising time go quite a bit faster. What I'm going to do with this particular dough in my Instant Pot is place it inside a well-oiled or greased liner so that it doesn't stick to our pot and then place a lid on top like this and we're going to press the yogurt button and make sure that it is right here indicating that it's on normal setting and let it sit for 20 minutes and it will rise until double. The bread dough is in the Instant Pot. It is doubled in size and all it took was 22 minutes. I was a little distracted. Do you wanna come see? You can see that the bread dough has grown quite a bit. It's doubled in size. I'm going to go grab a cookie sheet and some parchment paper to prepare our pan for our breadsticks. Now, do you need parchment paper for this recipe? No, I just like to use it because then it's a guaranteed nothing's gonna to stick to the pan. But if you don't have any parchment paper or a silicone mat, just spray your pan with a little bit of nonstick spray. Let's dump out our dough gently we don't want to squash it just gently pull it out of your instant pot or the bowl whatever it's been rising in now we're just gently going to push and shape this into a rectangle we don't want to totally deflate this or else they won't be quite as fluffy as we would want them to be while I'm shaping these breadsticks, if you haven't already, go give this video a like and subscribe to my channel with that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new content coming out. I would really, really appreciate it. Our dough is shaped here. It should be, oh, probably about a foot long, six inches wide. The next step is to use a pizza cutter and cut our breadsticks. We're just going to cut our breadsticks. You can make them as thick or as thin as you'd like. Can I tell you why I really like making these at my house? It's because I get to be the one in charge of putting on the Parmesan cheese. It's the worst when you get crazy bread and there's not enough Parmesan cheese on there. They're dry. No more dry crazy bread. These are just going to sit and rest while our oven preheats to 400 degrees. The oven is preheated to 400 degrees now, so these are going to slide into that oven for 15 minutes. While the breadsticks are in the oven baking, let's make our garlicky butter spread and measure out our Parmesan cheese. The garlicky butter spread is made with melted butter. We're going to use four tablespoons, so it's a half of a stick, and then one half teaspoon of garlic. I'm going to get to melting this and stirring that together, grabbing out my grated Parmesan cheese. One half of a stick or a quarter of a cup. One quarter cup of butter is going to be popped into the microwave to melt completely before we add in that garlic. Butter is melted. Let's measure out one half teaspoon of garlic powder. And we'll just stir this together with a spoon. Now all we have to do is wait another 11 minutes before those come out of the oven. And here's the game plan for when those come out of the oven. Like immediately after they come out of the oven, we are going to brush this garlicky butter mixture all over all of the breadsticks. Use all of this butter. Brush it, it will soak into the breadsticks and it is so good. And then we will liberally sprinkle with our Parmesan cheese. Those breadsticks are getting golden brown in the oven. I'm going to go pull them out bring them here so we can brush them with this garlic butter. Okay, this is what they'll look like. They puff up a little bit more in the oven and we're just going to brush all of this garlic butter all over the breadsticks. You can break them apart too to get the sides if you'd like. 
You can see how this butter is just soaking into the breadsticks here. I'm like literally salivating. Oh, it smells so good. All right. Now it is time for the Parmesan cheese. Don't be shy with the Parmesan cheese. My recipe calls for four tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, but don't let that limit you on your Parmesan cheese because I definitely don't limit myself. We're going to sprinkle liberally with Parmesan cheese until we've covered all of our breadsticks. The Parmesan cheese is going to soak up some of that butter and as it sits, it will come together in just one deliciousness. This is it. They're done. Time to dig in. I don't even know where to start. Which one should I grab? I'm going for this one. Time to pull these bad boys apart. Okay, I keep burning my fingers, but I just can't even wait. They are so fluffy inside. I keep swallowing. I'm salivating. I am so hungry. Next time the craving for crazy bread hits your house, you don't even have to leave your own kitchen. Make them yourself. Mm -hmm. I like to wipe up the extra butter and Parmesan cheese on it. Those are good. Those are real good. Real good.